They're at the point um, where they are at that verge of helping the adults out and, you know, becoming adults. Um, and uh, they don't, I don't think my character personally wants to. He doesn't really want to, he still wants to be a kid and he doesn't want to have to survive. He wants to just be in a normal world where he can, you know, play around and do kid things. But he, he has to survive and he has to help his family out. So I think that's where they are at the start. And then, like, his journey is kind of goes from, you know, being vulnerable and scared to being kind of brave and taking, you know, independence and, oh, yeah. And for Regan, uh, her, my character is, she's very strong and she's very brave and confident in what she wants and will work hard to get it. And she's always trying to help out the family and help her brother, Marcus. I think that Regan's character and Marcus' character have a very strong relationship because they're both kids and they know how, we, they know how each other feels. But Regan's having a difficult time with her father and she's guilt-ridden and she feels guilty about being deaf because the deaf, the deaf aspect um, caused her to make sound and she becomes a liability for the family because she's not aware of sound and that you know any sound could be the death of her family so that's her burden. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I don't want to be deaf I think it's, you know, because the world would be easier if I weren't deaf. Uh, you could be in school, any school you wanted to. You can communicate with anyone uh, sometimes. And I want to hear music. I want to hear what people are saying in the films. I have to read the captions, That's, I mean, which is great. But I took those experiences and applied them to Regan. That's what I did. I took all those experiences and thought, this is what Regan feels as well. And thinking about the relationship with her father, which was so difficult uh, because they weren't, neither of them were able to communicate, which is so, totally unlike my real life experience where I have a very close relationship with my father. But I sat with John and we had a conversation about it. And he said, look, in real life, we have a great conversation. But in this scene, we're going to have a very difficult time communicating to each other. I can't, Regan can't express that she loves her father and her father can't express that he loves her. And that's how he got me through the scenes. He has got a lot of pressure, and obviously in the movie sometimes when he knocks the lamp over, sometimes that pressure, you know, he it causes him to do things that, you know, could potentially hurt the family. Um, but yeah, he, I think he doesn't. He like I said before, he doesn't want that pressure, and um, he's doing whatever he can. Like he's doing the things that his parents want to try and, you know, release that pressure from him. Yeah, they were really, you know, unique, all of them. Um, and it was great to have those, you know, only scenes with the, with the whole family, like the dinner scene, which was really beautiful. And those scenes felt safe, you know. They're, they're pretty much the only scenes in the movie that uh, kind of have a bit, a hint of safety in them. Um, and so to play that and, you know, to be part of the whole family you know, in the, in the same room and acting in the same scene was quite cool. Yes, I think that uh, the family bond is so strong in, in with these characters, and we have these ex we we have a lot of shared experiences, and none of us are happy with our life, and none of us are happy since the creatures have invaded Earth, and we never know what's going to happen next. But our bonds uh, with the family are what pull us together. We, we want to get out, we want to have fun again, we, and we all share love with each other. And, but we all desire to be independent, and it's hard on the family because we have all these restraints, and we don't know how long the invasion will last. We don't know, uh, we, and is this our new reality forever? And uh, it's very, it really melts your heart because you care for this family. You, and, you know, that dinner scene is the only time when you felt a little calm.
I think it was very interesting to work with the crew, uh, watching them film, watching them stage it. I mean, they're creating John's world and John's vision of this, of this world of a quiet place. It wasn't hard for me to be acting uh, while they were doing the technical and specific directions because John would just keep reminding me to be natural, uh, surprise yourself, uh, find, find the moment. And he said, you know, always be surprised, don't, don't mix it up. And that was a lot of fun. Obviously, we did speak, you know, yeah. in between takes. I mean, that would be pretty hard if we were silent the whole shoot. But um, yeah, it felt it felt, you know, cool to have the only speaking scene in a whole movie, and um, to you know do that and to work on the only speaking scene. <laughs> like someone with a, you know, a boom was like, wow, you know, someone's actually hearing us speak and also the waterfall was beautiful so that that day was you know this the scenery was absolutely beautiful and incredible um yeah so that's probably one of my favorite scenes actually uh we didn't meet uh i i we didn't meet but when until the movie we started emailing each other before we started filming. So I knew a little bit about who, you know, what he liked, his favorite foods, what he was reading, things like that. But when we met on the first time in rehearsal, we, we had rehearsal for two weeks, but it was an instant connection. He started to ask to learn some sign language. I, I thought it was amazing, and we just became quick friends. And you know, we had so many things in common. And whenever I was around him, I felt so calm, and I could just be myself. And we were always, you know, fooling around, doing some little pranks. He always scared me, and sometimes I felt like strangling him. I'm just kidding. But um, when you know, after this film, uh, when I went home to Utah when the film was done, I felt like I left with part of me missing. I felt, you know, a hole in my heart. It was very difficult to leave. It was, um, you know, I'd gotten so accustomed to seeing everyone and playing with Marcus, I mean, <laughs> playing with Noah every day. So to go home, it was just a big change. I'd say the dinner scene again, uh, just because, you know, it's the only scene that seems you know, connected with the family and there's hope in that scene. You know, they're praying for a better life and for a better world. Um, and I think it, it means so much to the movie, that scene. And uh, it was amazing to use it because we got to eat fish. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite scene it was on the bridge. It was so beautiful. The environment was so beautiful, and everyone was so calm. And the day was perfect. It was easy to shoot, and that was my first day. Uh, that was the first day of shooting, and it was great to meet everyone for the first time. It was sort of made me just relive it when I saw it, and uh, you know, I finally got comfortable with the family. And uh, the food was delicious during the dinner scene. Uh, Noah's right. I could I couldn't eat it all. <laughs>